In this video, I'm going to be going over my specific technique and how I've been using Anki to learn a language. I've been using Anki to learn the Arabic language for quite a few years, almost four or five years now. And so um, I just want to share my feedback. Um, there's a lot of resources out there on how you can actually use Anki to learn a language and even how Anki works. One of the main videos, and I would absolutely recommend this, is Guide to Anki Intervals and Learning Steps. I've been using this um, video and I've revisited it multiple times to learn really what like how Anki works how the algorithm is set up and how it's calculating how uh, your card should be spaced out if you don't even know really what space repetition is I recommend just search Anki and you're gonna find a lot of details about Anki um, but it's pretty popular so I'm sure if you're like learning a language or you know you're a student maybe you've heard of it um, similar to Quizlet right so this is how I've been particularly using it. And, and there's really two takeaways that I want people to, um, you know, to, to, or two points to take away from this video, which is number one, how I create the card. Because I, for me personally, that's worked and maybe potentially this could work for you, right? The second thing is how I actually set up the learning steps um, uh, and, and my feedback on learning steps, okay? So the first thing is, and I found this super valuable, um, I don't know when exactly I found out that there's actually a dictionary built into MacBooks, right? And alhamdulillah, I have a MacBook. So I've been using uh, actually the inbuilt Oxford uh, Arabic dictionary. Uh, it's actually quite good. It's very simple, actually, as well. So if you're a beginner, this is a really, really nice way to, um, to add cards into your deck or even to just look up words, honestly. So the example I wanted to take is like, for example... Um, in terms of a word, qara'a. So, qara'a means to read. This is a past tense. So, Arabic is always third person, past tense. Uh, that's how you kind of, uh, that's like the base word. And then you conjugate it into the present uh, in perfect tense, which is yaqra'u, and then and qara'a, which is, which is to read. Right? And this is how I would grab the definition and I would add this to usually for example here I have a deck for random words right let's say this is a random word I just l listened to it uh, while I was watching a documentary or something or I was, I was listening to something and I I learned Qara so I would, I would add it in this manner but the thing is over time when I started to really get better at the language and I started to try to just go and read random material I found I was learning so many new words that I was so quickly forgetting if I was just creating like cards that would give me the word, you know. So what I would advise is create this card deck, okay, uh, or rather this word uh, card, right. And in this case, also one quick piece of advice: I'd usually try to separate the definitions. Uh, if I could, if I could just make it into like multiple rows as small as possible. I found that's very easy for me to quickly process that information, um, um, especially since I'm sometimes I'm, I'm learning on my phone or even on an iPad sometimes, it just makes it easier. Okay, so first I would create that word card, but then to, to help my learning, and this is what really changed the game for me, is I created a separate deck here. I created a separate deck here, which I called, here this is like random sentences and expressions. So I would actually take the dictionary definitions here, or the dictionary sentences, and I would actually create separate cards with that word in that sentence. So for example, Qur'an Naslan, which means to read a text, right? He read a text. So that's one example. I could use Qur'an Qisatan Litif. So I read, or he read rather, to read, he read a story uh, to a child, right? So that's another example. And I would actually now, all of a sudden, I don't just have one card about qara'a, about to read, right? I have that card with just a word. Then I have other, like now if I use those two sentence uh, cards, I have two additional sentences that I'm being exposed to. And that also, when it comes to Arabic, is really important because, for example, with verbs, sometimes there are specific prepositions that go with that verb, right? So I'm getting, now I understand this is the the preposition that I go that I use with that verb and you know and that's just getting exposure and that's really one of the most effective ways 
I think, to use Anki to have both the word cards and the sentence cards. So that's one piece of advice that I wanted to give. And this is just such a fantastic tool to use, like, you know, um, to, um, uh, to, to add your words, to search up the words and add them. And the other thing I do as well, I have a notes app here. Um, and I'll have actually random sense. So I have Magic School Bus uh, books at home. They ha they're in Arabic, right? And I'll, I can take some of these words that I go through um, and I'll actually add them into into Anki deck. So I'll, 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 as I go through words, either under Magic School Bus or I have like some random words here. Like these are Stories of the Prophet, which is a famous uh, book, um, random words. I'll grab them from the notes app and I'll actually add them here to the dictionary. You know, a when means time. And then again, I'd create a card. Then I would look through, okay, what are some of these sentences? Which are the ones that I'll usually try to get a sentence where I have, I have most of the words down. Sometimes there's a word I might not know, but I want to really understand most of the rest of the sentence. Otherwise, you know, if it's full of words, I don't know. It'll just make it more difficult. Okay. So that's, that's my system there. That's number one. The second thing I wanted to point out is if I go here, so this is the the um, the deck that I'm using called the Arabic language Lugha Arabia. And the other thing I wanted to point out is is having a good learning step. So again, I'm going to point you back to this video guide to Arabic intervals and learning steps uh, to understand really what goes into this. And then this is a part of the video as well. Longer learning steps are better, where he actually himself covers. Uh, how you can set up longer learning steps. And this is really important because the way Anki is set up by default, it, it considers that you learn stuff really quickly. And so essentially, for those who don't know, there's a learning phase and there's a graduated phase where it considers that you've learned something. And if you can learn, if you can get something correct after one day, it considers it learned. And the way the algorithm is set up is like, for language learning, for me, it was like a nightmare because once it's considered learned, if I get it incorrect multiple times, it's going to show it to me on a very frequent basis and it just totally messes up the workflow because all of a sudden you're being bombarded by like the cards that you, you were supposed to have learned, right? So because once you learn the cards, you're supposed to have a really long interval where you're not seeing it. And so to uh, compensate for that uh, or, or to get over that issue, I've set up a very long interval for myself. Um, now in the video here, I think he recommended having it at 15 days where after 15 days, if you can get it, the, the correct answer, you consider it learned. I put it to 30 days uh, and this is what I'm experimenting. This is something I've done more recently where I've really pushed it out more, whereas previously it was even, I think it was 15 days I was following what was in the video, but I just found this works um, for me. And then the downside could also be technically when you're in the learning phase, if you get something wrong in the learning phase, it will take it all the way back to the first step. So um, that's something to consider here. But first, I recommend if you if you want to understand what I'm talking about, go watch this video, and then you're gonna fully kind of understand what I'm talking about here. And this is the main setting that I adjusted every everything else for the most part here. It follows what was recommended here in this video, um, especially when it comes to um, uh, like for example, leech cards, cards that you get wrong so many times. Uh, so that was one of the other main things that I wanted to point out. Have a really long learning step if you're going to use Anki for learning a language. The other thing that's also actually very important is if I go to actually like practice a card, okay, regardless of what this card is, habata yahbitu al hubut, right? This is the card. It means to descend, to fall, to land, to touch down. Now I actually don't know this card, right? But if you're using Anki, only ever mark the card hard or good because the way the interval uh, modifier works uh, or the way the ease factor which is one of the things that goes into the algorithm how the card is going to be spaced out if you press hard or easy it adjusts it, it adjusts the ease factor in a way where it's going to increase or decrease it right again if you don't know what I'm talking about go back watch this video and then come back here and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about so always either press easy or good and if you're going to use Anki for language learning or pretty much for the most part, anything you're going to thank me later. Okay, so that's the other thing I want to point out. And the very, very last thing that I wanted to point out, if I go to Anki preferences, which I cannot believe this is something I just recently learned. But when it comes to scheduling the cards, you have a couple options here. You can have new cards 
uh, that are mixed in with the review cards that you've already like seen or been learning, or you could have new cards appear before reviews, or you could have new cards appear after reviews. Now, by default, I'm pretty sure it's mixed new cards and review cards, but I pretty much always found the new cards are always coming at the beginning, and it was really annoying because like I, I just I wanted to see my review cards first, and I just recently, not too long ago, discovered this. Um, but this made studying a lot nicer because I can review cards and then get to the new cards. Uh, I can review and then get to the new cards. So that was very, very beneficial. So, I mean, this is just a few of the like little tips or tricks that I wanted to share from my end. Um, when it comes to understanding Anki, the other thing I would say is there's plenty of content online. Um, th there's this really good video. Um, there's even here Matt vs. Japan. Uh, this is another... Uh, nice little tutorial where he talks about it. He's been learning. Uh, he's been using Anki for a while. And this guy as well, um, Priyak. Uh, actually, I've, I've seen some of his videos. And when it comes to some of the add-ons or the plugins, which if I go under tool here, I have like um, uh, managed note type. Oh, no. If I go actually to add-ons, I have a number of add-ons here. So review heat map, which is the this here, which shows me my streak and you know how I've, how I've been doing for, with Anki. Uh, image resizer was one that I got as well off of video off of YouTube and so you can watch those videos like I said there's tons of content and then come back here and really you know it's an art at the end of the day you're going to refine how you uh, come up with your learning steps and you're going to do what works for you but those are some of the things that I want to share with you and you know I wish you all the best on your learning journey uh, your language learning journey and, uh, you know, I hope to potentially make, uh, you know, future content if, if I find any other tips or tricks that are worth sharing. Thank you very much for watching.